Hey you guys, um, thank you for your patience. I know I've been gone for a while. I was out in Maine helping a friend who's uh, dealing with a bit of a mental health crisis and um, now I'm back in Seattle and um, asked you guys, you know, what you guys want me to cover. Um, and so we'll go into that right now. Um, I do want to say, you know, there was somebody commented on this channel uh, while I was gone that uh, talked about you mean stutter, uh, stuttering and stumbling and all that and was really rude about that. And you know what? Fuck you. Um, so here I am, I'm back, and, um, I'm just doing my best that I can here, so please be respectful. Anyways, um, so one of the questions that, um, I got, uh, when I got back here today was, uh, how to stretch the shoulder, and, uh, to me, I, I'm, I kind of want to start to address the issue of shoulder mobility, right? Um, so let's go ahead and first we're going to start off by looking at, uh, the shoulder joint. So, um, we have a little bone here, right, which would, our, would be our humerus, and I apologize that I am not much of a drawer here. Um, and then we have kind of our, our shoulder bones right here, so this would be kind of like the posterior of the collarbone and whatnot that comes here. And then we have this little triangular shaped bone, so this is in the back. Um, and so with these uh, bones here, we've got a muscle that runs up here um, kind of goes underneath that and attaches into your humerus here um, and I feel like supraspinatus is what that is but I could be wrong um, it's been a while since I've reviewed so um, the last time I reviewed I did the anatomy stuff so it's probably in there so go ahead and look at that um, then we have like our subscapularis which also kind of feeds into here um, coming on top of this uh, the sca uh, scapula here, we have our infraspinatus and teres minor and teres major. Um, and if I wanted to come here, we might have some that are here in the, the back here. And so what's uh, what's going on there is the, the um, those muscles, you know, you have some that will uh, abduct the arm and lift it up, right? Um, and then you have ones that are going to be like your infraspinatus and teres minor. They're going to be responsible for external ro rotation, whereas the teres major is going to be responsible for internal rotation. And then you have, um, of course, that big-ass one that comes down here into your uh, thoracolumbar fascia, which is going to be your latissimus dorsi. And one of the things about the latissimus dorsi is that um, it actually bonds a little bit towards the anterior position of the humerus. So it actually wraps around a little bit to the front. And so when it contracts, if no other muscles are in play, it's going to cause internal rotation of the shoulder as well as the uh, adduction and, um, and uh, shoulder flexion. Um, so that's going to be that. And then we, of course, you guys probably already know, we have, you know, our... Uh, deltoid complex here, right? That's going to come over the top of the shoulder. And feeding into that as well, um, so this is just all the posterior here. If we look at the uh, front of the body here, now we have sternum and ribs and all that and whatnot. So, um, and then our humerus. So um, here, you know, it's, it's a lot less complicated. What we have is we have um, going into our collarbone up here, sorry we have our uh, top pectoral muscles, right, that are going to feed in kind of like that, right? And then we're going to have our medial pectorials, which come off of our sternum and go here, right? And then we have our lower pectorials here, right? So, and then of course we have our um, anterior deltoids as well feeding into that. Um, we also, as when it comes to the shoulder flexion, we also have our uh, long head of our biceps femoris right there that comes in there and will aid in, um, I guess it's going to be more kind of attaching into that uh, shoulder complex, but um, that's also going to be aiding in uh, uh, arm flexion and extension. Yes. Uh -huh. I've been away, okay? My mind's heavy. So, anyways, coming back into this, what, um, what we want to start thinking about when it comes to, uh, oh, shit, um, sorry. We also have or trapezius, right, and levator scap here, right, which is good, of course, attaching to the scapula and help bring it up. So, when we're looking at uh, shoulder mobility and shoulder tightness, we have to acknowledge that there are a lot of things that are going to be in play on this, right? And so, going back to like the infraspinatus and teres minor, these external rotators, um, we only have a few very small muscles that work for the external rotation. And so, we have all these other muscles that are pulling us into internal rotation, which would be your, like our pectorials, our latissimus dorsi, um, our anterior deltoids, um, and... Um, 
uh, Terry's major and all that. So we have all these muscles that are working for internal rotations, but very few that are working for external rotations. So a lot of times when we have tightness in our shoulder, we feel like um, uh, like our posture is bad, which would be a, a part of this would be partially because those muscles that work on external rotation are going to be uh, super, super uh, overwhelmed by the other muscles. And so one of the things, and I've been experiencing this a lot lately because I've got um, a little bit of a strain right here in my uh, paraspinals um, that, and then my lats are going, are kind of going into overdrive right now because of that. Um, and so what's um, happening in that case is that there are muscles that are in play and postural things that are in play that are taking the muscles to their longest position. Remember if you look back at sliding filament theory, right? Your filaments climb up each other and the higher up the filaments go, the more bonding points on those filaments that there's going to be and the stronger the muscle's going to be, right? And so if your muscles are trying to keep you in, in a stable posture, and they are, you know, you're like this, and all those posterior muscles are, um, including your rhomboids, right, I should have included those as well, right, um, are being pulled into this position, then those muscles are going to be lengthened and try and hold on with fewer bonding points than they should be. And so those muscles are going to start feeling tight and overworked and they're going to start spasming. And then when they spasm, they're trying to grip and squeeze. Like if you try to... Um, just putting this into a wrestling BJJ kind of uh, thing. If you're doing going for like a cross the pelt choke and you're squeezing and pulling, your forearms are gonna get really, really tight suddenly and you're gonna lose your grip strength. And that's what's happening there, right? The muscles are being pulled into a lengthened position and they're trying to pull back, but they're being overwhelmed by either bad posture or by um, these muscle imbalances that are, that are going on there, right? And so they're going to seize up, they're gonna spasm and they're gonna get super tight and they're gonna complain and they're gonna, then they're gonna over fatigue, right? And you're gonna be in a lot of pain from that. So what I'm kind of getting at here is like, you know, a lot of times when I've gone in for uh, therapy for um, shoulder tightness, which usually is because of uh, injuries I get from doing grappling of sorts, um, usually my therapist will actually go in and he'll work on the infraspinaceous and teres minor as part of the muscle comp complex that he's trying to release. Why? Well, they're not the ones that are, you know, overly strong and pulling me into bad posture. No, they're the ones that are overworked and, and spasming and, and becoming knotted and whatnot because they are um, constantly in this position where they're trying to bring us back to a stable posture, right? And so um, one of the first things I would say is that um, if you're feeling like you're getting into this kyphotic posture a lot, you're feeling like you're losing range of motion in your shoulders, one of the first things I would tell you to do is going to be actually to be working on exercises that work that external rotation to make those muscles stronger, okay? Um, but we are, we're going to go into some stretching and some uh, release uh, concepts in order to kind of make that um, a healthier environment in there, I guess. And so... Um, that's one of the things that you can be doing is focusing like posterior deltoids, external rotations, W flies, Y flies, I flies, T flies, all these things that are be working to pull you back into this posture. But let's also kind of talk about like if you're looking, starting to get um, shoulder mobility issues where you're just like, I'm losing range of motion. So one of the first ones that you're going to see, um, let's see, I've got more someone throwing here. Um, if I'm doing an overpress, overhead press, right, you can see I can bring my arms right now up to my ears pretty much. It's a little bit to the front, which is perfectly fine, but they're, um, but they're not way out here, right? And so if you're doing an overhead press, and in order to get your arms vertical, you're compensating by coming back here and basically creating an incline press position, you can't get your arms back into that position. So um, part of that is um, that kyphotic posture that we're talking about, and that's limiting your range of motion when we get up here, right? You might be perfectly fine down here, but up here you're like, oh, I just cannot quite get my arm into that position. Well, we need to start to address that. So remember that, um, again, your lats are pulling you into internal rotation. So that's one of the things that we need to kind of look for. So even though, you know, doing rows and that type of things are going to work your lats quite a bit, um, it can't be the whole picture right there, right? And a lot of people do try to correct bad posture with just doing like lat pull downs and whatnot. And it's not going to work because of where that attachment point is, right? So if we're trying to uh, look at what causes kyphotic posture, and I've gone over this already a little bit, is that right in here, there's a um, protrusion of your scapula that comes through your ribcage and 
ends up right here and it attaches down here with uh, your pec minor into your rib cage, right? So it sticks through and comes down and that's attached to your scapula, it's part of your scapula. And so what happens is that acts as an anchor. So as your shoulders rise, it gets stuck in that, it's, it can't move as much. And so your shoulders are gonna start to round forward as they go up because this is a pinpoint and then you get into this position. So one of the first things that we tend to do when we have that issue is we start working on, on releasing that pec minor. And that's probably a pretty good place to start. But keep in mind, the reason why that pec minor is tight is not just because it's a muscle that's very difficult to stretch and potentially a little bit impossible to just, you know, oh, I'm gonna externally rotate, I'm gonna puff out my chest and have that be, and put, push my scapula back down as far as I can. That's not gonna really stretch that pec minor because remember, we have to go outside of that normal range of motion in order for our muscle to become stretched. So, one of the first things that we're gonna do to kind of relax and release that, because again, if it's, uh, if your shoulders are rising and it's being pulled into that position again, we're talking about those myofibrils, they're holding on, they're getting tight, and they're gonna become knotted, and that's going to be where that tightness is coming from. So we are, by doing release on that muscle, we are, um, we are addressing a symptom of the overall problem, but we're not solving the problem, okay? So basically what we do is we take a ball, right, put it against your chest, put it against the wall, and then we're gonna go through that pec minor and I'm going into this area here, right? So it's kind of right in here, right? And you can potentially actually feel that bone a little bit and you can feel that, um, that pec minor kind of in there. So it's gonna be right here in this socket and you're just gonna press into that. Notice um, I'm using the wall, I'm not using my palm. I could totally do it like this, but keep in mind what happens if I'm creating the pressure myself using my muscles is that you're going to get um, uh, symbiotic relationships going on there, right? So if I'm squeezing and I'm pushing, the muscles that are connected to that are going to try to stabilize. They're going to try to start working. So if I'm trying to release the muscle and I'm getting, you know, trying to stabilize that joint, which this muscle is part of, the muscles around that are going to tense up, including that muscle that I'm trying to get to release. So it's important that we actually put it on the wall and then we use the weight going into it to release that muscle. We don't ever want to be trying to release the muscle if that muscle is trying to be part of the structural um, stability of that joint. So again, we can go through there with that. Um, it's a little bit deep to kind of do any type of uh, grasping. Now again, when it comes to like grasping technique, I'm not qualified to be teaching this. I'm not qualified to be speaking on it. Um, but um, that being said, you know, what I use when I'm kind of imitating that technique is I'll use a training dagger. You can use a thick butter knife, probably the handle side, so I'd hold it by the blade and go through there. And you want to use um, a little bit of lotion, and then you're going to put it on the edge of that blade and it go through that in that direction. But keep in mind, your pec minor is below your pectoral major, so you're probably not going to actually be able to get into that particularly easy. So the next thing that you can do, which would be um, probably something that I would do more with uh, a partner, um, is you can round forward and get into this position, have your partner push into this. And you can put yourself against the wall, but you're going to kyphosis and they're gonna hold pressure on here with a little bit of lotion on their skin. And then they're going, you're going to open up your chest and come into great posture. So you're gonna go into that horrible posture as deep as you possibly can go. And you're gonna have your friend put pressure onto that joint and then you're gonna open up and come out. And so what you're doing is you're, that you are um, pinning that muscle into a shorter position, so you're, uh, and when you come back, you are stretching the part that goes up to that joint from that, and you are actually basically by, by taking the rest of the muscle out of the picture, you're actually gonna start stretching that muscle because you're now actually taking it to its full extent of its uh, full range of motion. So after you do that, um, just lacrosse ball pressure on that side, uh, maybe a little massage in that area, um, that's when you would kind of go into there and start doing kind of this more active release kind of strategy for it. Um, and that will actually help to alleviate that uh, pec minor quite a bit. Now, again, the pec minor um, is kind of, um, it's kind of the sidekick to the problem. It's not the problem at all, right? It's, it's not the brains of the operation. The problem is coming up here in our um, trapezius and our um, levator scap. So think about it, if you were carrying groceries, right? If, if these muscles were not engaged, you would just kind of really, really flop into carrying that. Your shoulders would feel weak and strained as you're trying to carry whatever you're trying to carry, right? Whether it's dumbbells, whether it's anything. So what happens? 
we engage. We hold up here and we engage this trapezius, right? And that's one of the reasons why uh, personal trainers, if they're worth, worth anything, generally won't tell you to actually work your trapezius specifically because it's already getting work throughout the rest of your day. Anytime that you pick something up, your trapezius has to engage. When you're picking up your weights in order to go over to do your chest press or you're do your row, that trapezius has to engage as does the levator's cap. So you're creating structure in that shoulder while you're in it. And that's gonna be most of the workout you're gonna get. And if you think about it, anytime you pick up a weight, whether you're doing a deadlift, whether you're doing a pulling exercise, pushing exercise, whatever, and you're transitioning, you're probably going to be, if you're carrying anything, you're probably gonna be working that trapezius. So it's getting an isometric, basically, uh, workout all the time. And when we're talking about building a uh, size in muscle, isometrics are going to be one of the ones that is going to be most effective at uh, building more size. So if I'm carrying and doing isometric exercises for long periods of time on that trapezius levator scap, it's going to become tight. So what do we do? Again, open up our neck, pin to the wall, and then move through these muscles here. Um, the next thing that I would recommend doing is getting a Theracane, okay? Um, this one is the Body Back Buddy. Um, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them all over the internet, whatever. Um, and so you just kind of hold on here. And I'm not going to pull down, right? What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to hang my, the weight of my arm on here, right? So I'm not trying to squeeze my muscle down because, again, that's going to create sympathetic um, uh uh, engagement in this area, including that muscle that uh, I'm trying to release. Now, if I wanted to, and if I, if I felt like I couldn't not make that muscle tight, tighten up, I could always switch my hands. But again, if this side of your trapezius and levator scap are going to start engaging, um, they're going to trigger this side a little bit, but, but potentially not as much. So it might be easier for you to control. And again, the mistake that people make when they start going through and trying to release muscles is they tend to go really, really fast or they go too hard too soon. So the first thing that we wanna do is we just kind of wanna probably start with a lacrosse ball, right? But we um, just kind of put a little bit of weight into that. And if we feel that the muscle is spasming or tightening up because of this, um, we can really go back on the pressure a little bit and just see if it will stop um, and just kind of wait for it, okay? And I've found this a lot when I do massage. Um, uh, is that sometimes I'll see, feel the muscle going eh, and it starts twitching and spasming under my hands, especially if I'm using heavy pressure. And if I just kind of uh, keep my pressure onto that point for a little bit, maybe back it off a little bit, that muscle's going to relax. But a lot of times what I'll instruct whoever I'm working on to do is take a deep breath and then put all their thoughts and all their mind into that muscle and trying to relax it because some of that tension is a reaction to pain, right? So when you feel oh, I hit that knot, you tense up, right? So, and really, really focusing on releasing that muscle and, be, and getting rid of that, at least the conscious element to that. Now, once you kind of get into there and you feel like, okay, it's, um, it's still too tight, it's still not quite doing its thing, um, you could, again, you can start going into more active release types of things. So what I would do is kind of shrug up and put on some lotion on my fingertips, right, and come into here, or in this case, I'm going over spandex, and that will do basically the same thing as the uh, lotion will, right? I need my fingers to be able to glide over the skin a little bit. So I get into this shrug position. I'll even bring my ear here, and I'll pinch onto that trapezius, and then I'll go into full length here, pitching and holding up and close, Right? And you don't even need to pinch if you really wanted to, if, if you're like feeling like that's too bitey or whatever in there, you can just put pressure on that, right? So I'm going right in there and starting to uh, stretch it out. And again, what we're doing there is that we're pinning the, this portion of mu the muscle so that it can't move while I'm trying to lengthen here, right? I guess it would be this portion. So I'd be really kind of stretching the stuff that's going to be above that and that's going to be moving under my fingers and bringing off a little bit of those adhesions. But don't press too hard because, again, we don't, if you're feeling like, like, I, I don't know if I really want to say this, but when you do actually go to an active release therapist and they start working the muscle, it's going to feel kind of like your skin is tearing a little bit. 
And it's going to be uncomfortable. It's like, oh, oh, because what's happening is you actually are tearing apart the scar tissue in that muscle. And again, if these muscles are always tensing and carrying and whatnot, they're going to uh, lock up, they're going to tense and they're tense up, they're going to spasm, and they're going to break, uh, start becoming scar tissue in there as they break apart and overwork. So we are trying to break apart and tear apart that scar tissue a little bit. Again, we don't want to be doing this very often, so think about this uh, in the same way that you would think about exercise, right? So if I am doing uh, bicep curls every single day, um, what's going to happen is, yes, my biceps are going to get bigger, but you're also going to find that they're going to get weaker. Right? The more you, you exercise um, constantly and don't give yourself time to recover, the more that you're going to develop scar tissue. Scar tissue stops muscles from being able to uh, use the entire, uh, the entire muscle. So again, if we look at uh, sliding filament, right? Uh, we have the Z lines and then we have... So if I have scar tissue, uh, let's say over here, right? And so that spot is, these are not able to slide over each other properly. These ones are doing all the work. So we, if, if we only had three filaments that were in play, right? Um, if we only had three filaments that were in play, now we have lost 30% of our power in that muscle because this portion of the muscle can't actually move. And what happens a lot of times is that when it does come apart, this um, little piece of adhesion and scar tissue might actually tear off another piece of the muscle here, and it could uh, translate up into, up into the next segment of filaments on the top of that D-line. Does that make sense, I hope? Um, so, I've completely got, gone uh, down into the deep end of this, and probably a little bit too technical for you, but anyways, that's basically what happened. And so what we're doing is we're breaking apart that scar tissue into teeny bits instead of like really big bits so that we don't start getting more damage. But if we're putting too much weight in there, we're really squeezing and we're feeling, oh wow, that's tearing every single time. Um, you know, what we're doing is we may be creating more scar tissue than uh, we're releasing. So we want to be, kind of find that happy balance where we are breaking apart this, but not creating this, right? Um, so that goes into the next thing that, um, this is something I actually do more often. Again, um, I, it's grasping technique, I'm not qualified to teach it, yada, yada, yada. Same thing with the active relay stuff. Um, put a little bit of lotion on. And then what you'll do here is you just go with kind of a medium pressure. I'm gonna go into a fully lengthened position. You could start, sometimes my therapist will actually start here and then have to go through a range of motion. But what we're trying to do is we're just scraping in with um, kind of moderate, like if you can kind of hear that a little bit. I'm putting some pressure into there, but I'm not pressing in too much. It's enough that I can kind of scrape like you're trying to uh, get um, like something thick and crusty off a wall, right? So you want to have enough pressure that you can get under there and kind of break it apart, but you don't want to be you know, squeezing in there and whatnot. You can start light and go further. And what you're probably going to develop in the area that you are working is going to be what's called a petechia. And a petechia is where the capillaries around the um, the area are going to kind of rupture a little bit and they're just like mini mini bruises so they'll look like little freckles here sometimes in uh uh big groups um but what we're actually kind of it's something you'll see but we'll also get a a reddening around there just like you have like a little bit of a sunburn i guess uh in color and you might feel a little bit warm in there and what that is is it's inflammation we have just done something that has triggered inflammation. Inflammation tells our brain and our hormones, hey, this area needs to be repaired. And when it goes into repair without with the scar tissue broken into smaller bits, you're going to end up, instead of having one big piece of scar tissue, you're going to have five or six little pieces of scar tissue. And then you do it again in uh, you know four or five days, and then you have even more little pieces of scar tissue that eventually you're going to get to the point where those filaments can actually start running over each other again. So. So that's kind of like our biggest thing here is, is kind of releasing these muscles that are causing us to stay in a shrugged position so that and uh, releasing the one that's anchoring us so that we don't get into that kyphotic posture so that we can actually regain this upper range of motion in our shoulders. So again, that's, that's going to be a big part of uh, what we're doing. Now, um, when it comes to like this internal rotation issue here, again, we have... Um, you know, our infraspinous and teres minor in here. And what we can do with that um, is I'm going to take a little bit of lotion to put on my fingers because it's going to suck if I don't. Um, I'm going to come down into this uh, like bottom of a lat pull down uh, position, right? And I'm going to just come into the muscles in here, so I'm pinching on the anterior and posterior position of this. Um, and then I'm just going to go through this overhead position a little bit. 
okay? You don't necessarily even have to pinch the muscle, um, especially, you know, since we're, none of us here are qualified to really do this, um, but just put a little bit of pressure in here and now start going in to stretching that up, right? And if you feel like, okay, you're hitting kind of the right thing here, you can feel that that's the tightness here, then, um, then you're probably going into the right area. Generally, the armpits, like in here, is going to be a little bit on the sensitive side. So you might feel, oh, okay, this is really uncomfortable, and it's going to be uncomfortable. Um, but, you know, going through this, we're kind of stretching into our lats a little bit here by pressing down and loosening it up right in there. We're also going to be going through the infamous Pideus and Teres Minor. We can go across and down if we're trying to work on the posterior. So getting here, bonding point. I don't know if we need to release that a little bit, um, and so on and so forth. So, going into once we kind of get uh, into this position where we've gone through, we've used the lacrosse ball. We and again, for those you can use, you, you should start with the lacrosse ball in here before you go into active release or resting technique in there, right? Um, so once you've kind of gone in there and you've broken up those adhesions, now we can bring out the harder tools when it comes to that, which is stretching. And so this is kind of something that I feel personally is uh, the order that you need to go in. So Because what happens is if you have that big piece of scar tissue in here and then you stretch, what you're going to do is you're going to break that apart in a more grace aggressive manner. What we want to do is we want to break it into little pieces before we go into those stretches. Okay? And so one of the ones that I'll do is I'll have an anchor point high and I'm going to sit into that and hang. Right, and that's going to elongate in here. And generally speaking, um, you know, if you're way out here, you're not going to get the same stretch as if you're close to your ear as you're hanging away from whatever structure that you're holding on to. Um, whether even if you like kneel down on the countertop, hold on to the sink, and then move away from it, that um, is going to again take the lats and a little bit of the pectorials, and we're going to put them into an elongated position here. Right. So anything that's pulling this down now. The next part of it is going to be going into external rotation here. So I can put my palm onto the wall and start to turn my body away. Now be very gentle with this because again, um, you know, this is kind of like a Kimura position, right? So we can dislocate our shoulders really easily doing this type of movement. So again, I'm just here, I'm just going to go through external rotation. I can go palm down and I can get into my little bit of that long head of the biceps femoris because remember that's going to be part of the shoulder complex that's going to be working to pull, uh, pull our arm up like that. So we can go through like that, okay? If we want to get more into our pecs, we want to start to rotate our elbow down, right? If we want to get into our deltoids, we want to go across. And for me, I find that this is particularly um, one of the hardest ones to actually get the stretch that I want to out of it. Um, and so what we'll do uh, in Jiu Jitsu, and I've actually been playing around with this a lot to actually be able to get into that a little bit more, is we'll be in that kind of bottom four quarter position. We'll have one arm extended, and then we'll put this arm against, against the ground, and then we'll just kind of sink into that stretch a little bit. Now, the thing that's going to really make this stretch really, really work is going to be this, right? I'm going to take this side that I'm not stretching and I'm going to be turning it down and trying to drop my chest into the floor, right? Which is going to help bring this in and over. Just be really, really careful that we're not trying to, we don't want to be up in this position where we're shrugged into this. We want to be in a more neutral position as we go through and into this, right? And then of course you can go here for getting into that tricep a little bit. That's also going to get again into that lat a little bit. But again, we need to talk about you know, we, we've got a little bit of this internal rotation stretch. Um, so we can continue to stretch our internal rotators by taking a bar. I'm just using a collie stick here, but you can use a broom. You can use whatever. Um, I find it's a little bit less effective if I'm like really, really close here. Because again, if we're trying to finish an arm bar, right, we're not going to hold somebody's arm down here close to the elbow, right? We have no leverage there. We're going to go to the top of the lever. So in this case, if I want to get to the top of the lever, I want to get my forearm perpendicular here, and I'm going to pull my shoulder blades together, right? Because I want to be in the most uh, anatomically perfect position when I do this. I'm going to pull back very, very gently, right? Because I don't want to, again, this is the Americana that we're basically doing here, right? So we're going here, and we're going to be stretching that uh, those internal rotators a little bit. And then we can go back down here, hold on to our stick here. Same kind of deal, 90 degrees, try not to shrug up and then pull out to kind of get that rotation there. Okay? 
Um, other than that, like we could uh, talk a little bit about like getting to the rhomboids, but again, that's going to be a muscle that you're probably going to be better off kind of focusing on more like some type of release technique, whether it's going to be somebody massaging you or using a lacrosse ball. Because again, if, if we're dealing with that uh, kyphotic posture, the scapula are then being pulled apart, right? Like that. And the, again, the rhomboids are going to be reaching out and holding on and they're going to spasm and they're going to get all tight. So if you're having a lot of rhomboid pain there, right, which is going to be pain right between the shoulder blades, right up along the spine there. If you, um, if you're feeling that, you know, you need to start releasing those muscles. But again, if you are still having issues where you're kind of in this kind of posture all the time, um, which, you know, if you're a grappler, you will, um, you know, those muscles are going to always be kind of going into that position and always trying to uh, stabilize. So really going into corrective exercise, doing things that will, right, if I have uh, a cable in front of me or a band and I'm just stretching out and pulling back, that's going to help strengthen my rhomboids, working on my external rotation, releasing these muscles that are making me shrug, releasing this muscles that's ca causing me to come forward. All these things are going to make it are the job of these posterior muscles much easier so they're not always standing in that really, really elongated uh, position all the time, and then they're not, you're not going to have as many issues with them spasming and causing you pain. Um, and again, um, if we are, you know, and then I'm, I'm just going to go into my case a little bit because it's, um, it is something that I'm struggling with right now. So if I have um, muscles here, right? So again, this is if you looked at a muscle underneath a, uh, a telescope, this is kind of what you're going to see, right? So again, this is a Z-line, this is fascial tissue of sorts that um, doesn't move, right? And what we have here, these are going to be your uh, filaments, and then those are going to be your uh, the other filaments that they're going to walk on. So these all have bonding points on them, right? And so they're going to be walking up and connecting. And again, if we are having an issue where, you know, you have part of this locked up, right? So those two are uh, locked up all the time. If you're feeling tight, it's because these muscles, these, this portion of your muscle is not doing all the work and it's, and it's constantly being pulled apart. And all this other, all these other muscles are going to have to compensate for that. And when they compensate, they end up in the same position as the one that was a started issue. So instead of having like one little spot that's all knotted and nasty, you're going to end up with this big section. Um, so in this case, for me, it's kind of right in here. And all through here, like it'll start on this side where everything will start getting tight and, and spasming, if like if I'm doing the dishes or something like that. And then you'll have this to start getting sympathetic. Because again, what's going to happen if you have tightness on one side of your spine, but not on the other, right? So, if we have our spine here. Yes, this is how I draw a spine. This is what a spine really looks like to me. Um, and you have your muscles here, right? This is, this is what muscle looks like too, guys. <laughs> Um, but you get this like little tightness here, right? And then this muscle is going to continue to stay tight and shortened all the time. What's the result of that? Well, your spine goes into what you could say is kind of this scoliosis kind of position where it's starting to curve because there's tightness on this side, which is going to take this side of the muscles and these muscles are now going to be elongated right? They're going to be stuck in that stretch position and they're going to be trying to pull that spine back in and they're pulling against that little piece of scar tissue over here, right? So this is all tight and it's causing this anchor on this side that these muscles now have to, which they're not, not mechanically uh, positioned to address, um, it's going to have to be pulling back against that and so you're going to end up getting tightness on both sides and tightness on both sides are going to start creating little knots. So that's kind of my long form uh, discussion on how you stretch the shoulders and how you start addressing mobility issues that might start happening in the shoulders is by going through here and starting to release the muscles that are tight for two different reasons. Either they're overdeveloped or they're things that you rely on too much in life. Um, they're muscles that are pulling you into a bad posture. 
Um, there might be ones that you work on too much, right? So one of the most common th reasons why people have joint pain is actually, especially if they do work out, is that they work on muscles like your pectorials too much um, because they're just like, I need to have those big ass pecs. So they're always working on that. What happens is it becomes overdeveloped and it starts pulling you in this kyphotic posture. And then you got this shit starting to happen in your back. So I hope this helps guys. I know it's really, really complicated and I hope I've put it in a way that really makes sense and simplifies it for you. Um, we'll be back here in a second and we're going to start talking about lunges.